Well, good day, and thank you for joining us here on the Cube. John Walls here, uh, bringing you to this conversation as part of the AWS Startup Showcase, and we're joined by Justin Bauer, who is the SVP of Product for Amplitude. And Justin, good to see you today. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Thank you for having me, John. Oh, you bet. No, a pleasure. Looking forward to it. Um, you know, personalization, that's what everybody's talking about these days, and, and how do we better personalize our, our digital presence, our digital products? Um, you know, how do we get much more acutely aware of the end user at the end of the day and, and grow? I know that's what Amplitude's all about. So maybe if you just give us a 30,000 foot um, perspective on that, about your thoughts about personalization today and how Amplitude tries to affect that. For sure. Yeah. So I, I think first off, personalization matters because it actually works. I think we live in a world where as uh, you know, we're drowning in content and distraction. Uh, and it's been proven that customers respond better to digital experiences that are more personalized, that are more relevant for them, and frankly, just save them time. Um, and the nice thing about this is not only do customers benefit, but companies do too. Uh, we actually see that a big impact on a company's bottom line if they're able to uh, deliver a more relevant customer experience to them because that leads to better engagement, better retention, and higher loyalty and lifetime value uh, for those customers. So, um, well, let's let's just go right to an example then. Uh, I know you work with a lot of different people. Um, but if there's anybody in particular that stands out, um, maybe give us an idea of a case study here about what practices you put into place, the kind of evaluations that you do, and ultimately the service that you're providing that allows them to increase sales and, and get a little more stickiness with their customer. Yeah, that's great. That's great. So I think one uh, company customer of ours we're working with right now on this is actually Chick-fil-A. Uh, so people are probably familiar with Chick-fil-A. Their mission is to be the most customer caring company in the world, uh, which I love. And, and personalization is critical to that strategy uh, because it helps them create a more relevant and seamless experience for their customers. Um, and the experience itself in the app is actually pretty simple, which is the magic of personalization. So you open the Chick-fil-A app, uh, you see a list of menu items, and those items are relevant to you uh, based on your previous behavior. Um, after you order your entree, you're then offered a list of personalized sides. And then after that, a list of personalized drinks. Um, and the great thing is that as new items uh, get introduced to the menu by Chick-fil-A, you see the ones that are most relevant to you uh, based on predicted affinity and all of the machine learning that we're doing in the background. And so really now Chick-fil-A is actually, they're able to deliver a customized menu for everyone that automatically updates based on your behavior, your preferences. Um, and I think the real beauty of this is that they're able to configure all of this by a marketer through a simple UI. This did not require an army of data scientists or engineers. Uh, they were able to use the Amplitude platform uh, to build out uh, this entire experience uh, for their customers. Right, because I mean, there, it seems like there'd be an enormous amount of analytics that you have to apply here, right? That um, because you got all this structured and unstructured data, uh, you know, it's, it's all over the place, right? And, and a lot of times people don't even know what they have on hand. Um, and so you got you to help them s sift through all this, right? So let's talk about that process a little bit for somebody who's watching and thinking about, well, that's all sounds well and good, but but how do you kind of automate this? How do you make it so that we don't have to invest a lot in a team dedicated solely to you know sifting through our data and making it valuable for us? Yeah, I mean, I, I think that's the beauty of uh, of Amplitude actually offering this in that that's actually our original first product, product analytics. That's what we've done. Um, so we've actually made an out of the box system that can read from all your different data sources. Um, so whether those be your product sources, uh, marketing channels, data that sits in your data warehouse, um, but it's not just piping that data. Uh, we then combine that into a unique identity uh, profile for that customer um, across all those different touch points um, and also have out of the box data governance. Um, so that you can make sure you maintain uh, the quality of that data profile uh, over time. And then that gets fed into um, our what we call our behavioral graph. It's our database. 
uh, that's actually built to both understand and predict future behavior. And so all of this happens effectively out of the box for a customer. They don't need to do any of this uh, themselves. Uh, we're managing all this for them. And then what they experience is uh, an analytics application so they can analyze that user behavior, understand kind of what uh, the drivers of different things like engagement retention are, and then use that to actually personalize uh, the product experience. And, and you mentioned machine learning. Um, talk about that aspect of this. I mean, how much more capability you have now because of what ML can deliver. And, and um, in some ways, it, it adds some complexity, um, but also obviously it delivers uh, exponentially, I would think, in, in benefit and value at the end of the day. It, yeah, for sure. I mean, you, it's just not possible to do one-to-one -one personalization without machine learning. I think that's actually, when we talk about the benefits and the advantages of personalization, it's probably even worth taking a step back. Like, there's a lot of different types of personalization. Um, I think when you want to do behavioral personalization, where you're truly getting to one-to-one -one experiences, you have to use machine learning. Now, you compare that to maybe like demographic personalization, which is actually, I think, when most companies talk about when they're doing personalization, they're actually doing demographic personalization. That's like, are you male or female? Um, what's, do you live in a city or a suburb? Um, uh, but the reality is like that light segmentation, it's not really that effective. Like, do all women who live in a city behave the same? Like, obviously not. Um, and so uh, we want instead to use behavior. Because your past behavior is the best predictor of your future behavior. Um, and, uh, and you need machine learning to be able to actually come up with, for an individual, what is their likelihood, propensity to actually engage on any piece of content. Uh, of which, think about for, you can think about Chick-fil-A, how many different items they have in a menu. Um, you can think about... Uh, like we work with um, a content company that has millions of different articles and they want to figure out what's the right article to put in front of you. Mm -hmm. Like that's just not possible to actually analyze that by hand, uh, nor actually orchestrate that uh, uh, in real time without actually leveraging uh, machine learning. Um, and so that's the exciting thing that's happened with uh, new advances in uh, supervised and unsupervised learning models that we can actually do those in generalizable ways. Uh, for our customers. We, we've talked a lot about behavioral. So that's obviously metrics you can track, right? I saw something, I clicked on something, I acted on something, I bought something. These are all very measurable activities. On the other hand, though, as you know, in the consumer space, a lot of it's emotionally driven too. You know, I make decisions based on, on my feelings or my thoughts or whatever. Can you, can you do any kind of unpeeling of my motivation in this? Um, almost like empathetic uh, investigation so that you have an idea what social cues I'm emanating or I'm sending off saying, hey, yeah, we can we can get John this way too. Yeah, so I, I think a lot of it is, I mean, we're talking a lot about the science of uh, product development uh, for sure and how do you bring personalization, leveraging data. There is then the art of actually understanding like what are the emotional states that users are in. And like, this isn't to say, that the ability to personalize the product means that you're not actually bringing the art uh, as well. Like you act, it actually is a both about the art and the science coming together. Um, and so you still need to, like, you're still going to talk to your customers. You're still going to understand uh, them and kind of what their uh, different uh, need states are. But this is then taking what you have, which you've built as a great product, then how do you optimize that? That's why we call it an optimization system. Um, and actually deliver uh, the best experience uh, based on that customer's behavior. So just to, to kind of flip this a little bit then, what are you doing, Amplitude? What are you doing that, um, that hasn't been done before? I, I, I understand that a lot of people think personalization just hasn't, ha has a great horizon, has a lot of great promise. Oh, but we're not there yet. I mean, what haven't we delivered on yet that you think Amplitude is improving on and, and refining this capability? Yeah. So I think there are a couple of things there as to why we haven't fully seen the promise of personalization deliver. Though we, and I would say we're really starting to see that chasm emerge where there are some companies that, you know, you think of, um, you know, Netflix, like obviously Amazon and others who've done, who've been really successful here, but they've done it through armies of people. 
Um, what hasn't happened is a self-serve way of doing this so that it does not require massive investments uh, in technical resources. Um, and so what we've solved for are three things. Um, one, we've already talked about it, but it's just so true. Like this actually in and of itself is not an ML problem first. It's actually a trustworthy data problem. <laughs> Do you actually have the behavioral data that you can trust? Can you actually capture that across the entire customer journey? Because you can't personalize a journey if you don't even know what your users are doing to begin with. So you have to start there at that foundational level. Um, and that is a big part of our secret sauce is that we've built a database specifically catered to helping you understand that journey of that customer across all the different platforms and channels uh, that they do. That's not easy to actually unify behavior in that fashion and allow you to analyze that in real time. Um, so that's the first thing we did um, is build that uh, that database. So that's number one. And that's just the foundation. You have to have that. Like I said, I think so many companies fail because they think we can go hire ML engineers, but if you don't have the foundation, it's not going to work. Um, the second thing isn't necessarily technological. It's more cultural, but it is really critical. And I think our analytics application has helped, uh, helped a lot here, which is you got to break down the silos between marketing product. Uh, engineering and data science. You actually have you have to have all of them working together um, to really be able to fulfill the promise of personalization because you have to be aligned and what's the outcome we're trying to drive. Like that's actually how I literally can walk you through like the how the how the actual product works. But the first starting point is what are we trying to accomplish? <laughs> like in the Chick Fil A example, it is we want people to buy more than one item. Okay, so that's your goal. Like you have to get alignment that that is the goal. Because if everyone's arguing about different goals, it doesn't matter what ML model, like the model needs to know what we're trying to actually focus in on. Uh, and so how do you bring people together? And you do that through shared understanding of data. Like you do that through, we call it a North Star. Like we're aligned and what is the North Star that we're focused on? And can you measure that? And that's analytics is focused in on that. And then when you have both of those, you've got behavioral data, you understand the journey of a customer, you're aligned in the goals and outcomes you care about, then you can leverage machine learning to actually deliver that personalized experience. And the advances that we're making there are in actually doing that in a generalizable fashion. Um, so that it does not have to be custom built for every single use case. Um, and our models are now able that we can run a model basically uh, every hour to update for a customer. Um, and that scales horizontally. Well, I know uh, Chick-fil-A certainly is, uh, has a track record that um, is inarguable, right? And, and and you've had a lot to do with satisfying that appetite for success. So, uh, Justin, uh, congratulations to Amplitude. It's been a real pleasure speaking with you, and thanks for the time today. Of course, no, it's been great. Uh, thank you for having me. Excellent. Speaking with Justin Bauer, the uh, Senior Vice President of Product at Amplitude, and you've been watching the AWS Startup Showcase here on theCUBE.